So one of the many questions that I get asked on various places online is what is the best way to interface with these old Akai samplers? So there's a multitude of different ways that you can do this. One of which is just to interact with the front panel. You have the front um, panel right here, which depending on the uh, condition of your unit, um, this is a recently um, replaced display, which is really nice and crisp, much crisper than the original ones. But this is kind of one of the ways that most people are familiar working with it. It's just directly from the interface and maybe with a floppy drive. Now a couple options that we have included in our unit is we have SCSI 2 SD drives. One in this case is built into where the floppy port was. And so this way you're kind of able to save and load files to an SD card using the SCSI protocol. And so one of the big benefits of SCSI is it is much faster than floppy disk and also runs at a higher capacity. But what I've also tell you that there's a way that we can directly interface a Mac with the Akai sampler. Well, in this case, we're using a PowerBook G3. And what is so peculiar about this model is that you'll see right here, this is an HDI 30 port. And you probably are wondering what that is. That is a built-in SCSI port that these MacBooks came with. And so you're able to natively have SCSI support um, built into your PowerBook here. And it will directly communicate to not only your more recent um, S3200XLs, but this will also communicate with your non-XL units. And so one of the only ways that you're able to work with the non-XL units is with these Mac machines in earlier. Anything that supports the SCSI Manager protocol will support the non-XL units. So here is a capture of my desktop display from the laptop. Um, it is coming through a series of AD conversions, so you are able to see exactly what I am seeing. I also have a keyboard and mouse hooked up to it for ease of use benefits. So we'll open up a Kai Mesa, and now we have it loaded. So the first thing you have to do when you've booted up this program after ins installation, is you have to find a sampler. Um, you can either find it this way or you can use Command F. It says right here that the, um, the sampler has been found on the bus, um, bus zero ID six. So you click OK. And so we've, um, we have a program loaded. Um, we of course have the test program. And we also have this virtual keyboard option that we'll be using. And so here we can directly interface with the sampler um, through a multitude of different windows here. We have what's in memory. And so say I want to load a program from memory. So we can import program. And take a look at see some files here. So I'm going to load this pad program right here. This is one of my um, pads from one of my previous songs that I have on file. And so I ask you to load samples with programs and of course, yes, that's what we're doing this for. But now from the Mac, we are sending via SCSI to the Akai. A real nice way to get direct access to your machine. Switch to channel three on the little keyboard here. And so if I want to save everything in memory, um, you can export program, save samples with programs. The save to desktop and say, Kai Mesa test. So now we have our folder that we want to save it to. Now we're going to click save. And so now we are saving that pad from the Akai back to the Mac. And so this is a very simple and rather streamlined approach to directly having backups of all your programs and samples on your Mac computer.
So another use that we have is we can also use Pellet Heads Recycle to edit this machine. So we'll skip that one, that one. So here we have a, um, a break that's already been chopped. But first things first, we need to add the sampler into Recycle so that it knows that it's what sampler is looking for. The first thing you need to go to is you need to go to Sampler Settings. And so one of the things you want to make sure of when you're working with Recycle and SCSI is that you have the option for SCSI enabled. And you'll one of the quick ways you'll quickly find this out is you'll have the options for SCSI and MIDI. If SCSI is not detected, it will not display um, SCSI transferability. So we have the Akai S3200 and we have OS 2.0. So you can click the Find button. It will look for the sampler on the bus. It has detected it. And so yes, we have now verified it has been added. So we're going to transmit this program and we're, you can call it whatever you want. We're just gonna stick with the default name here. Sample rate, if there's a template, you can load this into a pre-existing program or you can start a fresh one. So we're going to transmit this, but we can also do a MIDI file and transmit. If you're ever working with individual chops, it's always best to use the MIDI file um, plus transmit. It can be easier to line things up in your MIDI sequencer afterwards. So now we are transferring from Mac to the Akai sampler via SCSI. If this was done being done over MIDI, this would be taking infinitely longer. And so just like that, we have um, transmitted about 21 to 22 slices at a very um, quick and expedited rate. Desktop, save, close. And so let's give this a, a quick trial run now that we've um, transferred that all over. Trial Mesa 2, the minor program again. So here we're going to make the um, Amen Break Channel 4 just as a quick modification. And when you're the old school way of working in multi timbral mode with these Akai samplers is to have everything on the same program number and then um, selecting your MIDI channels 1 through 16 is the um, old way of doing multi, um, multi layered programs. So now we're going to boot up Cubase, quick test. Create a track. Import our MIDI file. So now we've um, imported our slices that you can clearly see right here. Here's the slices that have been imported. And now the test to see if this works. But first we need to set MIDI channel to make sure setup is correct.
correctly selected. Now let's check it out. So just like that, um, in a relatively short period of time, we have added programs, added slices to our sampler, and we are also able to save that program um, once we're back in Mesa and we have found the sampler. We can now take that um, added breakbeat that we have um, imported into the sampler. You can ensure that you have the memory window selected, um, export program once selected in memory, export program, save samples with program. And so now we're going to save the um, chopped break back to the Mac. And so the next time you go to load this, it's already been saved in the Kai format. And now you can just um, easily import the program back in to your sampler. Um, just like it's being pulled off of a disk and vice versa back and forth. And so one of the benefits that, uh, of course you get from this is it saves it in um, editable formats like WAV and AIF. Um, I think this one specifically is AIF. Thanks again for tuning in to this tutorial on how to work with these old samplers. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave those. If you'd like to subscribe, don't forget to subscribe. And if you have any suggestions or recommendations for the next video, please let me know in the comments below. Thanks again. We'll see you next time.